It's funny when you go in the way back WWE machine a couple of years, when Dean Ambrose came on the scene with Seth Rollins, with Roman Reigns as a part of the Shield, I think most of us took it as a foregone conclusion that Dean Ambrose was the safest bet of the three to become a top star. And you even saw initially with the WWE that their biggest spotlight, their biggest focus was on Dean Ambrose. It was assumed because of his ability to talk, because of his style, because of just the way he carried himself as a character, that this was going to be the guy that would have the safest path to becoming a top star. He was going to require the least amount of work, and he would be the one two or three years from now that would be no doubt about it at the top of WWE, and Roman Reigns was green as goose shit, and Seth Rollins had a lot of work to do. Uh, but then as the Shield went along, you could start to see a bit of a seismic shift. Seth Rollins was starting to get better in the areas he needed to get better at. The company made a strategic shift in the way they spotlighted and focused the individual members of the Shield and the Shield as a group to where now it was Roman Reigns that was kind of being front and center with Dean Ambrose here and Seth Rollins here. And then you get to the point where the Shield breaks up and, you know, many people were maybe thinking that it was going to be Dean Ambrose that made the turn. And instead of getting that spot, it went to Seth Rollins. So when it's come to Dean Ambrose quite a bit, what we've assumed to be true hasn't actually ultimately played out. But then when you look at what happened, so the shield breaks up, that's all fine and good. To me, the actual storyline of 2014 was that shield breakup and in particular the feud between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. And they were off to the races. That feud was awesome in so many different ways. But then something happened. You finally get to the point where you're going to have the big blow-off match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. You've already had Rollins win Money in the Bank, screwing Ambrose out of that. So he's got one over with him there. Rollins is associated with the authority. Dean Ambrose is not. But you get to their big blow-off match, and Dean Ambrose still loses to Seth Rollins because Bray Wyatt gets involved. So getting to the whole big blow-off match, you still have Seth Rollins go over Dean Ambrose. And then you enter him into the feud with Bray Wyatt, where you're serving him up to the guy multiple times that will ultimately get served up on a platter to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Then you get to the point where after the Royal Rumble, where he gets some shine, but he doesn't go all the way. He doesn't beat Wade Barrett for the title, uh, I see title at that at Fastlane, and then he kind of becomes a bit of the background for that I see title ladder match build up to WrestleMania 31. He starts off kind of being the the guy, starting being the focus, taking Wade Barrett's title, but then it becomes about our truth, and it becomes about this, and it becomes about that, and it becomes about everything except Dean Ambrose. And then you get to WrestleMania 31, and you have Dean Ambrose go out with that ladder spot, and he's not even involved in the decision. So now you've gotten to WrestleMania 31, where Roman Reigns has won the 2015 Royal Rumble. He has beaten Daniel Bryan clean at Fastlane. Now he is main eventing against Brock Lesnar. And Seth Rollins is the Money in the Bank winner who's cashing in, pinning Roman Reigns to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion to close out the show. And Dean Ambrose was getting carted off at the beginning of the night after going through the ladder. That's interesting. Something that, if you would have said three years ago, would be likely to happen. There's no way anybody would have possibly envisioned that. I don't truly believe. Um, and now you're going post-WrestleMania, and it looks like you've got him in the program with Luke Harper. This just leads me to ask, you know, in a curious nature, what exactly is the WWE doing with Dean Ambrose? What are they hoping to accomplish with Dean Ambrose? Why are they doing what they are doing with Dean Ambrose? And why have they done in recent months what they have done with Dean Ambrose? I mean, maybe it's a situation of where they're not so sold on him as a top guy as many of us believe he can be or many of us believe they should be sold on him. Maybe they kind of look at him and they don't see him as the best worker. Maybe they don't like his look. Maybe they don't like his shtick. Maybe he looked at Kevin Dunn the wrong way or ate one of his parents by complete and total accident one time at a backstage buffet. Maybe he sat there and had bad B.O. one day and Vince McMahon just didn't like it. Maybe they don't like Dean Ambrose's rock and kick-ass comb forward from here to Timbuktu. I don't fucking know. But maybe they started to put him in a certain spot and they thought, eh, we don't quite know. 
I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the WWE themselves just being unsure of what to do with him. Because you've got Seth Rollins. He's fitting into that cowardly chicken shit heel champion role. WWE knows what the hell they're doing with that type of guy. Even though they seem to have lost the ability to build up those bigger dudes like a Roman Reigns, they're still in their wheelhouse of comfort when it comes to a guy like Roman Reigns. So they have some ideas of what to do with him. But you look at a guy like Dean Ambrose, he doesn't really fit the Rollins mold. He doesn't fit the Roman Reigns mold. Maybe that's what's leading to them in part not being sold on him as a top guy. It's because they're not fully sure what to do with him. You're looking at a guy that incorporates pieces of maybe Mick Foley or Terry Funk or Brian Pillman or Stone Cold and this and that. It's kind of a hybrid of many different things, some Roddy Piper as well. And they don't really know what to do with him because he doesn't fit into any one type of mold necessarily. In a, in a corporate environment like WWE where they like to have everything nowadays so clear cut and dry in terms of everybody's role and try to have it neatly packaged in a certain way, a character like a Dean Ambrose maybe necessarily can't be packaged in that clean cut, kind of watered down, cookie cutter, vanilla type of way where you can fit him into a certain box or a certain category. And as a result, it, it leads to you not being sure of him. And again, that maybe leads to you not being sold on him as a top guy. But maybe most of all, it's a WWE being afraid of him. You know, because at one point in time in 2014, this guy was kicking ass. This guy was getting the best reaction of the night consistently he was booking he was cooking he was kicking ass and taking names and you're looking at it and you're starting to wonder if the whole narrative is going to have to start to shift about who should win the 2015 royal rumble and maybe they're pointing to a point where it's got to be dean ambrose and maybe that's what happened they got scared of that thought they had an idea and a vision that it had to be roman reigns they had an idea and a vision and didn't want to Put that at risk and maybe they decided at that point in time that it was wise to back off of Dean Ambrose a little bit before they created themselves a real problem even though they still had a fucking problem on their hands anyways the Daniel Bryan problem so what would it have matter if you had a Dean Ambrose problem or not it almost seems like as soon as Dean Ambrose was really starting to break through and really really starting to get over really getting a big time um kind of reaction every night starting to move some merchandise it's like the WWE sabotaged him now, according to Chris Jericho, the WWE would never intentionally sabotage anybody, even though they consistently sabotage anybody not named John Felix Anthony Cena with their merchandise sales on a consistent basis. They sabotage people all the time. So to sit there and think that they wouldn't potentially sabotage a Dean Ambrose because he was really starting to get it over and maybe he was potentially going to be a threat to Cena's top spot at some point in time, I think is foolish. How could you not believe anything other than that to be true? Because otherwise, why would you back off of Dean Ambrose like you did? It just doesn't make any sense. You know, the whole thing of him going to do a movie, whatever the case might be, again, it comes down to the pro what's your priority. Are you a fucking movie studio or are you a sports entertainment wrestling company? What's going to butter your bread at the end of the day? What's the most important thing? It's ridiculous. Maybe there's some concern because of the thought of how he is and the way his character is. Maybe Vince and Kevin Dunn look at him and they're afraid of putting him into that top spot because they're afraid he's going to be a CM Punk type of guy that brings CM Punk type of bitchy problems to the table and brings CM Punk type of issues to the table which I don't think is fair. I think most people would agree that Dean Ambrose, unlike CM Punk, doesn't come across as a prick. He comes across as a pretty good dude, a pretty level-headed, grounded dude that gets it, that understands it. You know, when talking about you can't take wrestling too seriously, that's why he likes Botchamania, because at the end of the day, it's a bunch of men wrestling each other in their underpants. Or talking about the fact of his character, why he wears jeans and a shirt like that. Well, if he got into a bar fight, what are you going to do? You're going to put on tights and freaking boots? No, you're going to fight as you are. Yeah, yeah. So this whole fear maybe of him being a punk-like type of guy I think is unfounded, but maybe that's legitimate. I don't really know. So maybe WWE's in afraid of him. They're not sure of what to do with them, so therefore they're not sold of him as a top guy, and therefore they're afraid of him. And that could be it. But at the end of the day, you want to know what it really is? It's just the incompetence of the WWE. Let's cut through all the bullshit. It's just the WWE doesn't know what the fuck to do. They can only focus on, it seems like, one or two guys at a time, and that is it. They've forgotten the lost art of how to book the mid-card. They've forgotten how to make compelling characters. And when they do make compelling characters, for whatever reason, because mostly their fear of what could happen or just their lack of long-term vision and booking because everything is so short-term and reactionary with this company, that they lose any 
train of thought or track that they have any particular guy on, and he ends up getting caught in the schmaz and the suck of WWE's mid-card, undercard hell. That's what it is with Dean Ambrose right now. They were emphasizing Seth Rollins. They were emphasizing Roman Reigns. They just didn't have any room for Dean Ambrose, which is a shame, which is ridiculous. Because from a, one standpoint, you want to talk about Rollins and how much he's grown as a performer, and that's true. Roman Reigns has gotten better no matter how much people might want to say otherwise. You look at Dean Ambrose, though. He's the guy that still, to me, has the most potential out of all three members of the Shield. He's the guy that long-term should be the biggest star of the Shield because I think he's the best talent of the Shield. And here we sit now, April 2015, and he's the least important of the three members of the Shield. And that's something I thought I would never say. And that's something that I would have never bet any money on because you know damn good and well, people, that three years ago or so, you'd have put your money on Dean Ambrose as the biggest star, Roman Reigns will get the Cena type push, and Seth Rollins is going to need help, and he's going to be put off to the wayside. What the fuck do we know? Come 2015, the WWE found a way to make Seth Rollins the safest bet. Roman Reigns still kind of getting that push, but not all the way like people want to believe or make you think. And Dean Ambrose is the guy that's lost in the shuffle. How could you lose Dean Ambrose in the fucking shuffle? How could you not do something better with this guy? How can you not do more with this guy? For example, the guy can talk. He can really talk. So you've taken away the number one device that he has, the tool that he has to get himself over, the mic. Instead of giving him the platform to talk consistently and be able to talk people into investing into his character, you've just made him about appearances and matches just like so many other people on your freaking roster. Seriously, what the hell is WWE doing with Dean Ambrose? If anybody could let me know, please. I'm dying to find out because it just doesn't make any fucking sense to me.